Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, colleagues. Uh, welcome to the, the COP27 webinar for local governments and municipal authorities constituency hosted by ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability, and its capacity as the focal point of the constituency. Um, my name is Yunus Arikan. I'm the director of global advocacy, and I'm also performing the, the ICLE's task of the focal point in the UNFCC process since 2009. I'm delighted to take you through the webinar today. Um, those who are familiar with our webinars, this is repeated every month in Wednesdays in two slots, one for the Eastern Hemisphere and one for the Western Hemisphere, 10 a.m. in the morning in European time and 4 p.m. in the afternoon. In our sessions, we also have uh, colleagues joining us time to time. Uh, in particular, we are also collaborating with ICLE Cities Biodiversity Center. Uh, and today, as far as I know, my colleague um, Kobe will join us uh, to provide updates on the progress towards the biodiversity COP15, which we are trying to ensure an appropriate synergy. And their agenda is also shaping very, very nicely over the next couple of weeks. Um, those who are familiar, we are running a kind of a first introductory webinar, uh, introductory presentation. Uh, if needed, uh, we could stop by and respond, but we prefer once we go through the whole topics, um, then we open the floor for question and answer, and we could um, we could then have a dialogue. Uh, in today's webinar, I am also informed um, that our colleague Heloise Chiku. Uh, from Regions 4 would also join us, uh, especially to share the updates and then the announcements from um, from the Regions 4 uh, declaration for COP27, which is now open for endorsements. I don't see her now, but if she comes, we will give her the floor, obviously, but she could also join us later on in the afternoon session as well. Um, and this session is recorded, um, and, and those recordings are available on the web uh, as well as the presentation. Um, so uh, I am informed Kobe has joined us. So we will invite Kobe to intervene at the end of the climate session so that she provides an overview of our agenda. So um, how do we go today? Um, as usual, we are going through, uh, I mean, I, when I look at the participants, most of the, most of the colleagues are familiar, but it's always good to recall uh, what is the basics of COP27? How are we engaged in this process over these years? Our key strategic approaches. Then we will spend most of our time in the LGMA COP27 orientation in terms of our delegation agendas. Um, uh, we will share some updates on the surge initiative and the ministerial uh, 
uh, that is now confirmed and now being planned. Um, we will spend some time on the COP27 multi-level action pavilion, which will be the home for cities, regions, and 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 all subnational governments at the blue zone in the UNF in the UNFCC. Um, very briefly, to, to go on, uh, global stock take. It's also an agenda at COP27, but it is something beyond. Um, very tiny discussion on observer engagement. The discussion is big, but unfortunately, today's session is not enough. And also, there's a huge background, which is not easy to follow everything in, in one uh, presentation. But I think it's important that we are aware of what's going on. Um, and then we will complete with regions four as well as CBD buyers to COP. So um, without uh, further ado, um, those, again, who are familiar, the terminology, it's so many abbreviations, LGMA stands for Local Governments and Municipal Authorities Constituency. We are one of the three constituencies acting in the UNFC space since 95. And uh, we are also representing the global task force since 2013. Um, uh, there is uh, more than 45 networks who are accredited to the UNFCC, who are in, officially part of the LGMA, but we are also expanding our in, in outreach and consultation beyond those accredited organizations because UN bureaucracy is a bit tedious and not every network can go through this, uh, this challenge, but we are in touch with them, even though they are not accredited. Um, officially, we are the, 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 the channel to the UNFCC negotiations, but over these years, there are also action agenda and, and initiatives with the presidency is taking up. Um, you may have seen, especially on the way to from Copenhagen onwards, we try to make sure that there is the recognition of cities. Uh, we achieved this in the Paris Agreement. Then we continue to build on the concept of multi-level action. Uh, and we are very proud that at COP26, the concept multi-level action is enshrined into the preamble of the Glasgow Climate Pact. So we are saying now that this is the time for multi-level action delivers. Um, we have a web page. You can uh, see all our uh, updates and, and how we engage in the process in different channels influencing the negotiations, action agenda, work with presidencies and uh, advancing the, the multi-level, uh, friends of multi-level action, which are collaboration with our national governments. Um, the website is now a bit more updated since a couple of weeks, uh, and especially next week onwards, we will also introduce our pavilion, the, the platform for pavilion and the agenda as well. Um, for those who, who have been uh, familiar, the recordings of the previous sessions are available. We would also suggest, because of the things are moving very fast, uh, that uh, next week, uh, no, not, not next week, but the week after, uh, we could also have the final webinar once again to just catch up what's going on, especially in our engagement agendas. We will see whether this is feasible, but I think it will be helpful for us because uh, COP27 is still a working progress in a number of agenda items. Even yesterday, there were some updates that I will share with you. So it is normal that we are in a very hot season for COP, so we have to be alerted for any immediate updates. Um, uh, what we achieved at COP27 is that time for multi-level action has come. Our pavilion initiatives, uh, commitments are, are much more visible and much more incorporated into the process. And that's why uh, we are proud that we'd like to continue this engagement, especially multi-level action pavilion to be the home for subnationals, uh, all sorts of national subnational governments, and that we are very happy that this will be materialized. Um, and from time for multi-level action, we are advancing to multi-level action delivers. This means that now we have to show how well multi-level action can take shape. And this is, of course, a new culture and new process. Uh, nations and cities are also learning how to do this. So we would focus on multi-level indices, uh, bring the discussion on climate emergency, uh, convene the climate and urbanization ministerial, which is also all now on the agenda. And of course, because of the region of Africa, as well as Mediterranean and uh, the North Africa is, is our priority topic this year. This is a process that it is, in fact, in the hands of the governments. It's currently the UK government. Now the Egyptian government is doing their best to prepare, set the tone. They have prepared all their initiatives and, 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 and discussions. Now it's time to roll this out. Going to the details now, orientation wise, we always say that we are talking to two different worlds, the world inside the blue zone, inside the UN accredited zone, that are the ones that have been nominated by parties or the networks, who are the ones who can enter into the negotiation rooms, 
they do not negotiate, obviously, but they can interact with the negotiators. And inside, of course, this big tent, there are so many other opportunities. We have our own pavilion, we have UNFCC agenda, and we have the other pavilions. Then there's another world, the green zone. And, and, and this time, especially, the green zone is the one that you do not have to have access uh, via UNFCC. There is a special registration page, but you can just complete it very easily. Whoever is in Sharm el around these days, they can visit it. Uh, but because ICLA is responsible, is in the blue zone and the negotiations, we have much more emphasis into the agenda in the blue zone. Um, and we know some of our LGMA partners are also active in the green zone as well. Um, Coming back to, um, so, uh, okay, hello, is this here? Excellent. Um, uh, Alessa, you can uh, elevate Eloise to a panelist anytime uh, so that she can also uh, prepare herself. Thanks for joining Eloise, and we will be eager to hear you after this basic presentation. Um, let's continue in the sense that, um, Yes, so how do we navigate? How do we orient ourselves? Um, uh, of course, um, the LGMA orientation also has to align with the priorities of the presidency and the champions, but we also have our own priorities. And as if you have seen that, uh, the topics that we are trying to bring to the table is also diverse. We are not only bound with the topics that is assigned by the presidency, but we also want to bring our own topics. For example, uh, in the high level segment, for example, we'd like to talk, talk, talk about loss and damage, uh, stock tech for climate emergency, multi-level action. This may not be on the official agenda, but we will discuss this in our events or whenever we're invited to the event, we will introduce this kind of topics. Um, or when we discuss about finance, it is not just this 100 billion, but how this reaches to the cities and regions across the world. So that's why uh, planning ourselves day by day according to the themes is important. And if you do remember, in the past couple of years, we were focusing on to one or two days, but now across the two weeks of COP, there are agendas that is relevant for us. If we look at those, um, let's say, in a bird's eye view, we in the UNFCC negotiations, we should be expect that we will have our opening intervention on Sunday. Then uh, there will be, uh, after the Sunday, there will be negotiations kicking off, technical level. Uh, in that sense, there will be the first global stock take, sorry, the second global stock take starting. We will come to that. Uh, the first week will finish on Saturday. Uh, stock take will finish. The negotiations, technical negotiations will finish. Then in the second week starts the high level segment and the LGMA intervention will be uh, on the 16th. And at the end of the, the COP, we will also deliver our statement. And nobody knows when, what does it mean to uh, as the end because it can be like the case in previous COPs, uh, anytime uh, in the next 48 hours from the scheduled um, end time. So in between, these are the bird's eye view, but in between we have so many opportunities to intervene, to interact. Therefore, uh, do not think that this is the only opportunity, but these are the ones that are officially and much more, let's say, planned in advance so that we can nominate our speakers and speeches uh, as appropriate. Then we have the Global Climate Action Agenda. It is starting on the second day of the Leader Summit, uh, and it is going throughout the two weeks, and it's already been a process you may not know it has been much more established now um, and the, the teams have been working for months. Um, ICLE and many other partners of the LGMA are engaged in a number of uh, processes, including the human settlements. Um, at the moment, all the events agendas are announced or about to announce, but we all know there are still possibilities of um, engagement, interacting either as a speaker or a partner panelist because last minute changes always happen. Um, then we have the, the presidency agenda, and this presidency agenda starts with the implementation summit on the 7th and 8th of, of, of November. When you say summit in the UN language, it refers to any event that is attended by heads of state or government, which means president, prime minister of any country are the ones who are attending the discussions. It's not the ministers, it is not the technocrats, it is literally heads of state. And of course, that is what makes the climate process so unique because there is no other global sustainability agenda that, which attracts so many heads of state in the beginning of those processes. Sometimes they fail or in most cases they fail. Uh, and then 
comes the ministers to make a, a damage control. Um, but sometimes they also give impetus that they uh, kick off some commitments, which helps the negotiators to pave the way. Obviously, this year is particularly difficult. Let's remember, because of the Russian invasion um, and because of this consequences on many agenda items, the global geopolitics is particularly very sensitive. And let's remember, even G20 environment ministers did not agree on a statement, a communique. Therefore, implementation summit, it's not expected to come up with a negotiated text, but still the debates will not be easy. Let's be realistic. Uh, however, there are roundtables and we are hearing there in the roundtables, there will be invitations to one or two of uh, local regional government leaders. Um, this is purely in the hands of the presidency. And the presidency will continue after the summit with the initiatives and and uh, we will go through it but you may have noticed that while thematically they are aligned with the champions agenda context wise and the way they are designed is significantly different than how champions work is done and which is which is still a good initiative or a good process because there are a lot of complementarity and in that sense we are engaged in the surge initiative we are engaged in the first ever ministerial on urbanization climate change at the cop territory uh, and there are others and which is still open for uh, participation as well under this condition what are we doing as our own agendas inside the unfcc process first of all we started this practice in, in the last COP, uh, COP that we will kick off with our own press conference at the beginning, which is on Sunday. Uh, that is an opportunity because then you can reach out to media and we would like to use this opportunity that all the announcements, commitments from LGMA could be synthesized. Last year, we already had a good diversity of speakers from Glasgow, Sao Paulo, State of Sao Paulo, Japan, UN Habitat, and Des Moines and Eclair President. So we would make sure this is again representing our global voice. Uh, this will give, give us the opportunity to set the scene. Um, then we will see whether we could engage in the uh, round tables. There will be side events that we are hosting. It is the UNFCC infrastructure side events. At the moment, there are a number of those, but I don't know all of them. And that's why I would like to ask Neatron the, in, in, uh, the agendas from each partners. Um, and this is the UNFCC of opportunity for us. Then we have the pavilions. And pavilion, as you have heard last year, it was for the first time such a big scale in the blue zone, multi-level action pavilion. It's our home. We will go through the program later. But there are other pavilions. The pavilions like, I mean, especially after Glasgow success, the thematic pavilions is more or more like mushrooms that every team depending on the financial capacities they can mobilize they have created their own pavilions uh, this is commercial literally you have to pay all the resources and that's why it is not easy to handle such such processes so uh, we know countries are there there are other specific teams like resilience um, hub or, or um, science pavilion. This year there will be food pavilion and so many others are coming on board. Um, and the green zone, as I said, it will, we will keep it separately. Um, how to make sure that we are attending all these in an appropriately as a constituency, we have just developed the tracking sheet. Last year we had this as well. Uh, this year, I'm not sure whether we are a bit late on that, but at least after this meeting, after this session, I will share this in the, the LGMA and, and Friends of Multi-Level Action Working Group. Those who are in the mailing list will have access to this uh, sheet so that you can populate this information. What we are tracking is who is our delegation, According to the information we have, we have more than 80 mayors and uh, local and other subnational leaders in person committed to arrive in different weeks and different days. And I expect the final figure would be around 120. We will put the agenda of multi-level action pavilion. We will put our agenda at COP27 with different pavilions. Um, we will also make sure we promote the commitments, the announcements, the, the deliverables that each of our partners are doing, and that is a special track that we'd like to follow more appropriately this year. And we will also track how we are nominating ICLE, uh, uh, LGMA uh, speakers um, in different sessions that we have addressed. Um, here is an example. It is basically an Excel sheet. Of course, it's nothing complex, but especially in the delegations, we'd like to track uh, the names, position, gender, 
city uh, nation and the coordinating partner organization and then for each of those leaders uh, would like to track whether it's week one or week two and if possible the expected arrival and departure dates uh, this is particularly important because as you have seen presidency unfcc champions are all asking us can you nominate this person can you have any speaker on that we have to be alert but more importantly we also have to respect that um, sometimes because of the name of the the city or the region there may be a lot of invitations but we are we recommend especially to the UN branded events, we do not take the floor more than once for every city or every leader. And by the way, these are the leaders, the political leaders. Huh? These are not the staff of the cities. These are the political leaders because at the COP mode, priority is at the technical uh, political leaders. But of course, the accreditation is also expanded to technical leaders, especially the workshops, especially the, the, the sessions where it does not need political commitment. We can also offer sustainability officers, climate managers, uh, these kind of uh, leaders of our networks can also be there, but it's at the moment is a bit difficult to track all of them. According to this list, I am very happy that we have almost all continents and all geographies are there. Obviously gender balance is not perfect, but I am very happy that we have a good diversity. But of course, let's be realistic. Even we can have last minute changes. One thing, just one the similar thing happened yesterday. One of our leaders, uh, because they are political positions, they are either, uh, let's say, removed from this post or not elected or uh, delegated to another post. So the name that you see here, may drop tomorrow or in a, a couple of hours later. So we also have to make sure that our partners are also flexible for this reality uh, because our constituency is a political constituency. These are the agendas. As I said, all the agendas are confirmed. Uh, most of the speakers are there. It is good to see that we will have human settlements. We will have some national finance, um, built environment, and other topics uh, all to be covered. And in each of them, there will be expectations that local and subnational leaders can be engaged. Um, some of the events are led by us, our partners, FMDV, ICLE, um, and, and, and others. Uh, and some are, are led by others, but we are guests there. Um, and here's the agenda of the presidency. As you can see, not just visually, but also when it goes to the details of each day, uh, it is much differently prepared. Um, as I said, it has its merit, it has its opportunities and, and challenges, obviously. Uh, but we are welcoming such efforts in the sense that it is empowering and encouraging us to be more bolder and to be more coordinated so that this is the new spirit of the Paris Agreement in the second phase after Glasgow, that it has to be multi-level and multi-stakeholder. Um, one update, as far as I can now follow, I want to go through the whole presentation so that then we can have the debate and discussion. Obviously, those who attended our previous webinars, you have heard uh, from our colleagues from UN Habitat uh, to present uh, the preparations. It has been a process since June. Uh, it has reached a very nice maturity level. Uh, last week, uh, no, two weeks ago, uh, at the Daring Cities Forum, Ambassador Ayman made another speech, and this speech is also now available publicly. Uh, he introduced uh, the vision and the, the perspectives of the initiative. We also had a speech from the UN Habitat uh, um, Global Division the Director, Raf Tutz, uh, so that the two core partners are, are, are presenting more publicly now. It's not anymore consultation phase. Now we are over this phase, and it is now officially announced that the documents are available, and it is now possible any organization who are interested in this process can roll, enroll through the registration form. They can track the, the concept note. Uh, and, 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 and we are happy to, to inform you that we are in touch with UN Habitat because of our role in the Secretariat, together with UN Habitat. We will soon make available all these um, background information, the blogs, the communication material, available at the LGMA website, so that there is also this ownership and contribution from LGMA, and this will be coming very soon. Um, those who have not heard before, this is an initiative developed by the presidency in collaboration with UNEBIDAD and facilitated by ICLE with a focus on multi-level action 
and holistic approach to urbanization. And there are five thematic groups on mobility, water, energy, waste and consumption, buildings and housing, and there are cross-cutting areas. And of course, when you listen, I really encourage you to listen Ambassador Ayman once again. The vision he laid out is that this is a living process. This is not a process that is owned by presidency. This is really an offer from the presidency to the urban and climate community. And that's why we're excited to take it up further because it will help us to reach to many of the topics we have been asking for. We have a governance model uh, which is being tested or we, we being developed. Uh, I'm very happy to inform you that the interim steering committee is starting to, to meet uh, based on the inputs we received so far uh, after consultation with the presidency as well, so that they will also come up with additional information and update on how to take this forward over the couple of weeks, months, and years, hopefully. Um, as of last week, end of last week, you also have heard that the presidency has started to issue invitations to the first ever ministerial meeting on urbanization and climate change at COP27. It's the first ever because it's the first ever inside the UNFCC in the climate negotiations that ministers of environment will be inviting or ministers of urbanization will be talking to ministers of climate at the COP atmosphere. Uh, that is the uniqueness of this uh, meeting. In the past, we had um, climate ministers and mayors like in Warsaw in other spaces, but a ministers of urbanization and ministers of climate change gathering at the COP atmosphere with LGMA is happening for the first time. That is really what is unique this uh, time. You can see the first draft. Obviously, the process has been drafted uh, by UN Habitat and, and the COP27 presidency. We have been informed that the LGMA constituency will be able to nominate speakers into this draft agenda as speakers. When we first look at that, and that's that's the purpose of this uh, webinar and all our, our, our consultations, that we should send them uh, a priority list as quick as possible. Um, our expectation as an LGMA focal point, or our recommendation or our wish would be that in every segment, there should be, we are expecting there will be a panel, panel of speakers, uh, that there is at least a local or subnational leaders as one of the panelists to be there in the podium. And then interventions can come from the floor from different members of the constituency. Obviously, it's a short duration. It's two and a half hours or even less. Therefore, we have to be aware. In that sense, our hope that if it can be accepted by the presidency and, and the habitat that we could have around five minutes of an intervention and we would like to start at least one of them to be reserved for Mayor Dijksma because of her commitment since June as our special envoy to this process. And we recommend that the other one could be an African cities because in the, we're in the COP, African COP. And the third one could be an Asia Pacific because we will go to COP in Dubai. In terms of interventions, we should expect shorter durations, like three minutes. And if it is well coordinated, it is possible to expect eight to 10 speakers from the LGMA constituency. And this should really be diverse. According to these expectations, and especially we are informed that there will the interventions will be expected to be delivered in person, not virtual. And if we look at the portfolio, I told you this list of 80 or more, we could envisage two or three Europeans, one or two US, at least minimum one from small island states, um, two or three African and two or three Asia. I suggest as is in our capacity that by the end of this uh, Friday, that this uh, tentative list could be communicated to us so that we communicated to the presidency and the UN habitat so that they review, as I said, we are not organizers of this process. We are invited to contribute. Therefore, the final decision is not even on ICLE or LGMA, uh, but we are very, very happy that there is a strong dialogue and collaboration. So uh, when we uh, share with you our agenda uh, tracking, uh, we would encourage you to really highlight your nominations. In fact, we also have a suggestion list, but uh, we will share with you later on after this webinar. Uh, one important point, um, as you may have remembered, the, the surge initiative and the ministerial had different starting points. They had different preparatory phases. They had different mechanisms. And 
we have always been expecting that at certain moment of time it will, will be the, there will be complementarity and, and, and coordination, which is happening because surge will be announced at this ministerial. So this gives us the chance that that we as a constituent, and as you have seen, the presidency is launching this initiative. The ministerial is launched by uh, convened by presidency and you never So we as LGMA, of course, we are very happy to be involved, but there is a value that constituency could also make its own suggestions or make its own um, empowering or a commitment that this initiatives especially are welcomed by the parties of the UNFCC. Once again, a, a process that is presented by your presidency does not guarantee that it is taken up to the UNFCC process. And that's why it is important that we as local and regional government networks as a constituents of LGMA should First of all, both at express our endorsement, engagement through the enrollment form that is available, but as well as reach out to our national governments or supranational governments to make sure they support this initiative. Once again, as of today, we have received uh, this tract by UN Habitat, but in the consultation in Nairobi, in the consultations afterwards, there are several global South countries some of them are really powerful countries uh, who have expressed or endorsed publicly, but we still don't have an, a global North speak uh, country who have expressed publicly their support to this initiative or to the ministerial. Um, during the Daring Cities Conference, we have heard um, Germany is welcoming the, the ministerial, um, uh, but we would like to have more. The logic that this kind of a call to action mobilized by Mayor Dijksma in her capacity as our special envoy, we believe in the next couple of days, the more signatories we can get into this uh, call to action, the stronger presidency can offer this into the UNFCC process so that they are feeling that there is a demand, there's a community who is asking this, so that the presidency much comfortably I don't want to say negotiate, but share this to the UNFCC process. Therefore, we encourage you, uh, the networks, uh, to join us in this call to action. And Mayor Dijksma's call to action uh, as Eclay's envoy is now available on the, on the web page. It will come also to other languages soon. Uh, she's already promoting it. We had the Committee of the Regions plenary yes, uh, last week. Um, we had discussed this at the UCLG Congress. Tomorrow, we will have it in the C40 and many other processes so that by the time we, we reach the beginning of COP, when the heads of states are convening, we could say that before everything rolls out, we have such a strong support to this process. And we could even expect a dialogue on multi-level action during the heads of state summit as well at the pavilion, hopefully. And yes, I know it's, it's becoming a long session, but we are just about to get our latest topics. Um, Multi-level action pavilion is now taking shape. We have our host Scottish government convened by ICLE as the LGMA focal point. We are in touch with Minister of Housing, obviously with COP27, the presidency and surge initiative, as well as Marrakesh partnership, because we have had some good discussions that they will also be visible and, and, and endorsing and, and, and working with us in this process. We have contributing partners who have contributed to the financial and technical facilities of our, 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 our uh, pavilion. Um, we are very grateful for their commitment. We also have partners who are rolled to the process, particularly through Scottish government, but also especially with African cities and regions. We are expecting there will be more partners also to be visible that are contributed in the session development. So as you can see, this is really a crowdsourcing. This is really a collaborative effort of our constituency. And um, this is the initial uh, calendar of events. Here you can see in blue that we will have LGMA joint sessions. These are the ones that we will have our discussions, particularly uh, in the morning daily briefings, but we'll also use it, for example, briefings for surge and every week or uh, presentation of the IPCC, uh, the subgroup for urban policymakers. Then in the yellow or orange lines, you can see as a Scottish government, as the host has, has worked with its partners and they have done their uh, agendas. In the purple ones, you can see African cities and region sessions. We are very proud that this COP will be the strongest ever COP for African cities and regions with their staff, with their leaders, with their partners, 
to be presenting their achievements. And we are very happy that ICLE Africa Secretary is rolling this out. They will provide us more updates later on. And all the greens are the ones that are being worked with uh, LGMA partners, including ICLE and all the other partners in the LGMA constituency. Uh, and we are happy that the topics also reflect the diversity of our vision for climate emergency in the second phase of Paris Agreement. During the um, urbanization ministerial, which will be at the UNFCC territory, which means plenary or meeting rooms, we assume most of the LGMA delegation will be available to, to watch and join this. Um, and therefore we have offered our pavilion to Marrakesh partnership at that there will be one lab being taking place in our in our session. Um, and we would probably conclude either with a, if possible, if there can be resources, a kind of a reception, or if not a global town hall on the way forward. One thing that you have to be keeping aware, the one of the updates that we received yesterday, for example, on Monday, 7th of November, we were expecting to have still some events, but we are just informed that only events that have a heads of state attending or speaking would be eligible to be taking place at the pavilions. So be aware, there is no side events of UNFCC on the first three days, and the pavilions are also restricted on the first day, only those who are with the heads of state. And in that regard, both with our partner Scottish government as the host and with our co-host, uh, the Minister of Housing of Egypt, we will do our best to ensure we have or we can secure uh, at least one or more heads of state joining us uh, in this dialogue so that we can comfortably say that multi-level action pavilion is also opening its doors during the heads of state summit. And we are particularly excited because Scottish First Minister has already experienced such a session at the COP26 in Glasgow. She was having a dialogue of female leaders with four prime ministers from Bangladesh to Zambia. Um, so we assume she is working on that and we will look forward to, do, to, to support it as well. And with the Egyptian Minister of Housing, we're also checking whether we could also find a way to welcome the Egyptian Prime Minister, who is the former Minister of Housing and who is an urban planner by profession, could join us. Um, and in fact, if we can achieve this, this will really be a nice, fantastic opportunity that at the beginning of the COP, this COP, this special COP of multi-level action delivery, uh, we could make sure that there is a strong voice uh, spread around the world, both inside the Blue Zone and, and across the world. Here's our logistics. Uh, we are in the Blue Zone space, and um, I'm very happy that all the partners are now preparing their sessions. This will be hybrid pavilion. All the sessions will be available online, both for speakers and participants. Uh, inside the Blue Zone, they can interact even with those who are trending uh, virtually. Uh, and we will do, make sure that this is really a convenient space. It is bigger than the COP26 space. It is 125 meters square. We have a lot of lessons learned. Uh, we will hopefully make sure that all technical procedures are functioning appropriately. Last couple of points, stock take for climate emergency is important. It is a process under the global other Paris Agreement, the first exercise happening this year and next year. The good thing is that in June, we managed to convince the UNFCC that stock take at the local level would also be taken into account. They will be presented an input. This was not at the, like that at the beginning. It was a result of our advocacy on the way to uh, June session and at the June session. So that's why it's so important to make submissions, to participate and speak and make very concrete and strategic proposals. So we are very happy the stock take will take place at the local level. And in that sense, um, we would um, share our preparations throughout the stock take in uh, Sharm el Sheikh. But this is not the end of the stock tech process. As of today, we have three thematic uh, streams. Uh, we have ICLE US, FMDV, and Committee of the Regions proposed as LGMA, but Committee of the Regions are not there at the moment there. So we expect a female speaker uh, from the Global South to be there. So we would be happy to have your recommendations. Beyond the constituencies, we also are aware champions have been inviting or managing participation of 
individual stakeholders. And we are very happy that our partners like Regions 4 or UITP are also selected as part of this non-party stakeholders, which is again, members of LGMA more actively in the process. That's very good. Finally, on the stock take for climate emergency, as we said, we have tested the first experience in, in, December, in September. We would like to recommend that this is following a Talanoa spirit. Where are we? Where do we want to go? And how do we get there? And it helps us to go for climate emergency mode of action at the national level, local and regional level, and with a specific focus on climate justice. Um, uh, we would suggest that a global multi-level stock take could take place during the third uh, technical dialogue in Bonn, back to back to the daring cities. And, and, and we would like sh make sure that this is also an inclusive process, particularly key stakeholders like science. So we would like to make use of the IPCC SOP. We would like to work with the youth. We would like to work with the parliamentarians so that they can also enrich and make sure that the outcome of the LGMA or the local stock takes are really taking us to the climate emergency mode of action, which is what UNFCC is striving for. Finally, the process for strengthening observer engagement is being a process over the past couple of months. Unfortunately, we were not able to follow it very actively. We were very weak in this, the consultations. There are a number of agendas, which is not nothing that is too much things we're against and we are all more or less okay, but there is a big agenda, which is the conflict of interest, which is particularly a, a demand from some of the constituencies to limit participation or ensure transparency that those who are connections to fossil fuels are either excluded or made visible into the UNFCCC process so that they don't block the UN processes. Unfortunately, there are things that may not be fully that we are in, in, in favor of this. As I said, we did not have an LGMA-wide consultation. There is a strong resistance from the business community and the Ringos are having um, questions or concerns about the process, the legitimacy and the, the viability of the proposals, because there are some proposals on the table which was which is aiming to be implemented immediately with the COP27, which is just two, two weeks ahead. Uh, so it's, it's a challenge that yesterday there was an intense discussion. This will come up with a new uh, agenda item and I will share more updates on that and we'll see how we can contribute. Honestly speaking, uh, I don't think we can be in a position to support one to the other because both of those proposals has its merits. So I believe there will be more a balanced approach that we would be supporting, but we will stay in touch on that for as well. So um, yes, the Urban October, our last corner, Urban October is full of energy, uh, energy and we will make sure that before we reach the COP, we will celebrate the city's day and we will also reach to the, the COP26 in uh, COP27 in Sharm el -Shay. With this in mind, I am extremely um, um, sorry that this took a bit more longer than than our, our our traditional presentations. I have two questions. Both Heloise is here and Kobe is here. Heloise and Kobe, is any of you having any uh, time limitation uh, so that we could offer one to the other earlier? Because we can run a bit longer if, if it is okay for you, um, but I don't want to uh, make any uh, un, un, unrealistic proposal. Mm -hmm. um, hello is welcome and Kobe welcome once again. Thanks for your joining us. Thank you, Eunice. I will have to leave on the hour, but I'm happy to take the floor for just a few minutes. Hello, is that okay for you? Yeah, that's fine. I, I also need to leave, but I can be very sure as well. So yeah. Okay. Uh, let's let's hear from our partners, uh, and then if there's any questions in the previous uh, topics, please start to type in the chat box. Kobe, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much, Eunice, and and hello to everybody. Yes, so um, it's definitely COP season, high season, as as Eunice says, and we are exactly a month behind with the biodiversity COP15, but it is a very, very important and crucial COP uh, for the biodiversity world because a new global biodiversity framework is set to be adopted there that will set the scene for the foreseeable future. 
for biodiversity. And of course, it's, it's, it's very instrumental for us to make the links between these two COPs. I just want to mention that there's also a third COP happening now, and that is, of course, the Ramsar Wetlands COP. And um, we will be there. Uh, because it's it's a special COP, it's Ramsar COP 14 in Geneva, and um, we will be there with a mayoral side event and also an award ceremony. Because as you know, ICLI co-chairs the um, Ramsar City Accreditation Program, um, where cities are formally accredited by the convention, and new a group of new cities have re, have achieved that accreditation status. It's quite a long process to achieve that formal Ramsar status, and these cities will be awarded um, at the Ramsar Cup in Geneva. And um, so, yes, just to say that we'll be there, and anybody from, from within our community who want to know more about that can contact me or Stefania, who is also on this call, um, and we can provide more information. But coming to COP15, just very briefly, um, Stefania is putting into the chat box, I believe, the link for where you can find more information about um, the, the program. The program will be posted later today for the summit. It's a high level program um, and detailed speakers are still being filled in. But uh, nevertheless, I want to already say that the formal partners are Quebec, the pr province of Quebec, um, city of Montreal, ICLI and regions four. And we are also being supported by Kunming um, and the, the uh, COP presidency, which of course is China. And um, this is great news. And there are other supporters from the UN and so on that will be announced in the days to come. We just a few weeks behind and I think it's just too premature to announce them today. But in a week or two from now, uh, please keep, keep an eye on this website because it is going to be updated now on a daily basis. I want to say that the summit is going to be extremely high level. It's on the 11th and 12th of December. And um, whoever can be there at mayoral level, at governor level, uh, we expect um, a, a very, very big turnout. And we expect that it's at a much higher level than ever before at any of the biodiversity COPs for our constituency, because it's in anticipation of a very big and important decision to be adopted around the, a new plan of action coming out of the Edinburgh process and, and led really by the government of Scotland, the UK, EU and many others. Um, strong support from others like Singapore, etc., and also parties from Africa and elsewhere. Um, I just want to end off by saying that it will, the summit is in the middle week end. It's a Sunday, Monday, and it's just preceding the high level segment of the COP. But during the two weeks of the entire COP, we are very blessed and happy to, for the first time ever, have a subnational action, subnational and local action pavilion, um, similar to what we have in, in, the, in the climate space. And this is uh, thanks to generous hosting um, by the CBD, who is another partner. I must say the CBD Secretariat is another partner. Um, and they are making space available, but also Quebec is funding um, the, the pavilion. Um, and this is going to be a fantastic, very central space in the blue zone equivalent of the biodiversity of the of the climate cop right in front of the negotiation hall so there'll be lots of exchange opportunities with the parties a, a program filling up very fast with many of you involved in many aspects of that program and we invite the whole global task force and anybody in our constituency who still want to be part of that please reach to us we're finalizing the programs in these very weeks and the registration process is tight, it's closing very soon, and ICLI needs to vet everybody that we bring in, so please be sure that you contact us as soon as possible, um, and yeah, I think you see the dates there, and I want to just say that we are busy rolling out globally Cities with Nature and Regions with Nature webinars, um, they're very well attended, uh, earlier today we had one for the Oceania region with um, very, very good attendance, and Cities with Nature, Regions with Nature will 
will be adopted as the official platforms for cities and regions to make their commitments to the new global biodiversity framework. It's all fully aligned and we encourage those who are not yet um, part of Cities with Nature, Regions with Nature to join now. It's free and easy to join. Um, but at the same time, you'll also be able to sign up on site when you are when you are at the COP. I will stop here, Eunice, but we would just like to also discuss with you that we continue these um, this platform um, also during uh, the, the Egyptian uh, 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 climate COP, because that's when a lot of information will come through also for the biodiversity COP. And our African team, we're standing ready. We're looking forward to seeing all of you in Egypt, in Sharm el Sheikh, beautiful place. And um, yeah, we will be at both COPs. Thank you very much. Let me unmute myself. Thanks a lot, Kobe. And uh, as I said, I think we will also provide more updates about African cities and regions in the, the LGMA pavilion in, in Sharm el Sheikh soon. Uh, that's also exciting. And, and, and congratulations to, to you, all the partners, for making our voice strong and so visible. And as we have said, multi level action is now the spirit of the whole new world we are living in. Um, Alessia, I see Stefan is sending chats, but is the participants able to read those chat links? I don't know. If you can check, that would be good because I see it's only hosts and panelists. Uh, meanwhile, let's go to Helois. Um, uh, without further uh, delays, and Helois, thanks for your patience, first of all, uh, and flexibility, but we are eager to hear your updates. Sure. Um, thank you so much, Eunice. So I'm Eloise. I'm the advocacy lead for uh, Regions 4. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar, Regions 4 is a network of regional governments working on adaptation and resilience. And we represent uh, regions within the UNFCC um, focused on adaptation. Um, and so I just wanted to give a few quick updates for those of you working particularly on resilience and adaptation. Um, so what, the first one is that we are working with the Committee of European Regions as co-leads of the Adaptation Working Group of LGMA um, towards informing the negotiations on the global stock take, but also on the global goal on adaptation. So we've already participated in the, the first technical dialogue of the global stock take, also the, the, the workshops of the global adaptation goal, and we've provided a submission uh, to the first global stock take with a poster. So there was a call for posters. So we, we provided that as well. And we will be present um, at COP um, to share um, some of the key messages uh, from this submission um, in the, the second dialogue on adaptation. So I'll share with Eunice again uh, the submission, but you can read it. Um, and I'm thinking for those of you as well that would participate in the global stock take, I think we can share some of those key messages together. So that's one of the, the first elements. The second one is we will be launching the Regions Adapt report at COP. And it's an important uh, document because it gathers the, the reporting of regional governments on resilience. And it's the document that we share with the Race to Resilience. Um, and so, and we do it with CDP and we'll share it also with the LGMA constituency, but it, it, it essentially gives a good picture of where regional governments are at in terms of adaptation and resilience. And it can inform as well some of your messages on adaptation. So we'll share it with you as part of our, our general briefing to the LGMA constituency. And then the, the third element is we've we've worked on a declaration of regional governments for COP27. Uh, we will share it with you. We're still welcoming uh, logos from an, uh, an uh, adhesion from uh, regional governments and their networks. Uh, essentially, this declaration will be launched on an event that we're organizing on the multi-level action pavilion on the 10th of November with the government of Scotland and under two. Um, and it's, it's an important high level event where we're launching some of, some of the main ask of regional governments for the COP. Um, some of them are obviously um, the participation of regional governments in the review of NDCs and NAPs, but also their integration in, the, in, in, in providing and reporting on progress to the global stock take and the adaptation goal. And finally, this issue of finance, really trying to, to breach the gap and, and decentralize finance at the local and regional uh, level. So if you're interested to join the declaration, we will share it with you. Uh, and uh, if we can have logos by the 31st. And finally, so we represent regions within the race to resilience. 
you can still join if you're a region or a network of regions and you want to uh, join the race, you can contact us. We really welcome more and more uh, members. We have 70 at the moment. Um, and essentially, it's a bit similar to what the cities have done uh, for the race to resilience. We ask uh, regional governments to commit to four main commitments. Um, and then we assess their progress from year to year through our CDP and Regions Adapt report. Um, so please join us, um, contact us if you're interested in the race to resilience. We will be part with the EKE of an app imp uh, implementation lab, uh, lab and breakthrough lab uh, that will be taking place on the 17th. Um, and it's on action adaptation plans so we invite you as well to join us there to to listen on how regional governments and cities and local governments are are you know fulfilling their commitments to the race and acting uh, towards resilience so yeah thank you very much and we'll share these elements with Eunice so he can share them back with you definitely Th thanks Eloise and congratulations also for your progress um, again it's it's a diversity and richness of our constituency uh, offering concrete uh, information and capacity to make sure that this second phase the the the, the second phase of the Paris agreement is much more successful than the first one because multi-level action is enshrined in its in its heart of it so that our motto for cop 27 multi-level action delivers is concretized with, through such initiatives and such updates and reports and more to come uh, in days ahead so uh, there are some question and answer and i see there had been uh, this issue about chat box has been sorted out as far as I can follow. Um, so we will make sure that there is also this update in when you receive the, the links. Um, there are questions uh, from Gisela from uh, Assembly of European Regions. Uh, the, the, the action, uh, the, the LGMA tracker was not shared yet. Uh, Gisela, you didn't miss anything. Um, it was uh, just presented this webinar that was brand new uh, and I, we will share it after this call uh, and we will make sure that you are receiving this as well and of course we will be more than happy to include the AR delegation uh, so I will make sure that you're included in the mailing list as well. Elsa uh, from uh, Urban Shift um, she's announcing that there will be Jeff Pavilion one of those pavilions as you have uh, heard uh, there will be a special event of Urban Shift it's it's one of the Jeff 7 flagship programs on integrated um, action it is a legacy from Jeff 6 uh, and and there will be uh, special events at the Jeff Pavilion uh, uh, so thanks Elsa so we will make sure that this is also listed in our uh, other pavilions agenda beyond the multi-level action pavilion once again we announced multi-level action pavilion as our home as our safe space we have created this for all of us but we will never limit ourselves we will not be squeezing into this cocoon but we will use this as the stepping stone so that we can be much more confident and powerful when we go to other pavilions when we are, talk to other partners other nations and other stakeholders so that they are aware where are the cities and regions and region subnationals at the cop but this is the place where they can reach us but also they can connect us from there onwards it's like a beehive huh? it's 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 really a place where we meet but then spread the information across the world what, especially i would like to once again together with uh, my colleague alisa chanel who is leading our communications work we will come back to you especially how to make better use of our lgma daily briefings how we can better use of our lgma website and our uh platform wova platform which will be the base for our virtual elements of the pavilion so that our messages spread across the world more effectively um maybe i can give a break if there are if there are any questions please you can raise your hand or type in the chat box or question box um um uh, i hope uh the access to chat box is now concluded um any colleague who are in the discussion who are involved in this preparations if there are anything we are we have missed uh you can feel free to update and and use this uh opportunity but we will of course uh, keep more updates uh, in regular time as well um if not we are of course happy to close the session uh, by the hour, by the latest, or even earlier, with one minute is even one minute is good. Um, 
you know, maybe maybe I can just add, and I want to say thank you to C40, uh, who, who are holding the um, annual annual meeting at the moment in Buenos Aires. And uh, we know that Mayor Valerie Plant is there. UNIP, UNIP is there as well with um, a specific breakfast on financing. And uh, Mayor Plant is also there inviting the C40 mayors personally to come to the to the biodiversity COP. And we expect that, um, as I said, this, this biodiversity COP is going to be extremely high level. So um, thank you to those C40 mayors that are committed to be there with us in, in Montreal. It's great that we are, for the first time now, elevating um, our presence in the biodiversity space with the pavilion and the, this very high level summit to the same status as we have achieved uh, in the UNFCCC space. And that I think is an indication to our entire constituency that things are shifting towards, um, from a biodiversity perspective, towards a bigger uptake by the subnational community of this agenda. And we warmly welcome all partners together with our partners, Regions 4, to see many Many more of you uh, participating in, in organizing future uh, biodiversity summits and associated events at these COPs. Thank you. Thank you, Kobe. It's, it's exactly in this moment of uh, moments of crisis and emergencies, we really have to unite our forces because when you go to the action at the local level or ground level, they don't differentiate according to conventions. It is just have to be safe environment, livable cities, uh, respect to nature, harmony with nature and harmony with ourselves uh, through a new culture of civilization that has to be built and the challenge is that how fast and how wide we are able to build this and the cops are all just opportunities for us to accelerate these efforts um and with this maybe we could come to a closure of our session i don't see any hands raised i don't see any questions addressed we'll stay in touch obviously um and 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 we'll make sure that uh, we prepare uh, we advance our preparation for cops in Sharm el Sheikh Montreal and beyond thank you thank you very much <laughs>